Hey everyone and welcome back to VFX5 once again. In today's video, we are going to see how we can create a realistic glass material inside Unreal Engine 5. Yes, today's topic will be very interesting and be with me and follow along. So as you can see over here, uh, I have already created my material and as you can see, I am having a good amount of glass, good amount of reflection and in probably in, uh, you can see in glass, we are having good amount of dirt materials as well. And as you can see, I am having uh, my corners or edges, uh, something like green, right? So how we can create that? Let's start with scratch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold control and space bar and in my material, I'm going to create a new material and probably I'll name it MM for material underscore glass demo, something like that and hit enter. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply my new material, blank new material to my table, right? To edit that thing, what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click on that material and I'm going to bring my material editor in the screen. So as you can see over here, I am having a fresh material. First thing first, what you need to do, just select material and you need to go to blend mode and probably you have to change it to translucent because if anything you are going to create, which is having transparency, you need to change the blend mode. And as I'm going to select translucent, many of options are disabled and I'll let you know why. After doing that, first thing we need to create some kind of base color to the glass, which is not mandatory, but I'm going to do that. So hold down three and left click, you will have a vector three node. So simply I'm going to connect to it base layer. Apart from that, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more vector three node and I'm going to double click and I'll give it a color, probably like green or blue, whatever you want, hit OK. After that, I'm going to create another node called scene color. So we'll have scene color in texture. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply both the options or both the nodes, right? Something like that. Also, I want to control the opacity of that particular element or that particular color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one. So for that, I'm going to hold one and control left click and a constant will create and I'm going to convert it to parameter because if I want to create in material instance, so it, it will be very helpful to us. So I'm going to convert to parameter and probably I'll, I'll name it uh, edge opacity because I want to create my edge of different color and my tabletop of different color. So after creating edge opacity, also I'm going to uh, multiply both the options. So I'm going to type multiply and I'm going to multiply it, something like that. And what else I can do? I can directly connect this multiply to my emissive color. And as I'm going to connect it, you are having nothing because in edge parameter, you your default value is uh, one. Either you can change it to one or if you don't want to change it, you can use uh, one minus node to invert this operation. So hit tab and you can type one minus. So probably both will work fine. So I'm going to connect it over here and going to connect it over here. So as you can see, I'm having my green uh, color. So you can use both the ways. So after that, I'm going to save it. It will take some time to uh, calculate and I'm going to minimize it. And as you can see over here, I am having green everywhere. Can you see that? But I don't want green Overall, I just want green on my edges. So what I need to do, I need to mask my edges. I can do it by two way. Either I can use vertex paint technique to paint my vertexes of my edge or I can create some sort of mask and I can use that particular mask. So this tabletop is uh, unwrapped in Maya and I am having a mask based on UV. So what I can do, I can use this UV to control or create my mask. So I'm going over here and probably I'm going to hold control and space bar and I'm going to drag it. So in order to use this as a mask, there is a little trick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, of course, I'm going to use my red channel to mask my edges because I have unwrapped and I know red color is for edge only. 
so i am going to create a node called lerp basically we can uh, blend multiple things in lerp so linear uh, interpolation and i am going to connect my a you can connect both the ways and i am going to create one constant node by holding one and uh, left click and i am going to connect it to b because i want anything is going to multiply with the my red color it should be red so and in this constant i am going to uh, put the value one otherwise what will happen i am going to right click and preview uh, node so what will happen you can easily see i am having white everywhere gray and white but i don't want this i want black it should be transparent so again i am going to create one more constant by holding one and uh, left click and i'll convert it to parameter because if i'm going to again if i'm going to uh, convert it to uh, instance probably i can use it so i'm going to say it edge mask or something so i'm going to do that and probably i will connect it to alpha and the value should be zero so as you can see i'm having black and white information and i'm going to stop previewing node and now i'm going to do this i'll take another multiply node and i'm going to multiply my this thing this mask and this data and probably i'm going to connect it to emissive so it will take some time and now you can see i'm having black at the bottom and top i'm having green so let's save it and let's see what's happening so i'm going to save this thing save or you can apply it it will take some time now let's check so as you can see over here i am having my green at the edges and i'm having black at the top right now i am going to give some kind of color to top as well so how i can do that let's bring my material editor and for that thing what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this control c and control v and i'm going to change this to probably a lighter blue or cyan might be hit okay and and remember one thing i want top this time so what i need to do i need to invert this operation to mask it out right so probably i can take this node and probably i can use multiply and in multiply i can connect this a and b you can swap the inputs as well and after that i am going to use another node called add because i want to add my top and edges so that's the thing i am going to add it and now my final input will be this something like this right so let's see uh, probably i have done nothing wrong so i'm going to save it and let's see what we are having so as i can see i am not having anything probably i have done something wrong so let's figure it out okay so i don't want to multiply my this data because i want my inverted data right so what i can do i can take another node called uh, one minus to invert it and probably this time it will work i'm going to connect it and, and uh, sorry i'm going to connect it and i'm going to connect it over here uh, this time and let's see let's change the color first uh probably something like that towards white little bluish but white blue and now i'm getting good result hit okay hit save and let's see this time now i am having crystal clear glass right so this is the way how you can think and how you can start doing but it's not looking realistic right so what else i need to do i need to increase the quality of uh, a rendering you can say quality of rendering so how i can do that just you need to go over here just select your main material and come down over here and in lighting mode by default is volumetric non directional so you need to select surface forward shading so it will take some time but you need to understand that if you are going to use surface forward shading it will increase the rendering time as well right so you need to understand that and now i am having something like that and as i'm i'm going to change lighting mode few more options are enabled now and one more thing i am going to change it should be two sided right 
So again, if there is a glass, then it should be reflective. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one constant node and probably I'm going to connect it to roughness. Right now, if you want, you can change it to parameter and you can uh, say uh, roughness. You can change it anytime and you can see it's all reflective and I'm going to save it. And once this is done, I'm going to minimize it. And now I'm going to see and you are having a very good reflective glass. Don't bother about uh, this thing. Probably I can add another material, uh, uh, probably a wood material. But you can see over here, our glass is doing perfectly fine. Isn't it great? So uh, one more thing I can do, if you want some dirt on it, probably a fingerprint or probably some kind of dirt here and there. Again, same thing we can do it uh, in this texture particular because it's looking pretty clean. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some dirt as well. So how I can do that? Pretty simple. In roughness, I can add little bit of dirt. So I am having some dirt over here in mega scan. In surfaces, I am having this dirt. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to import it and probably I can do something like I can I can uh, use a red channel to add dirt. So probably I can add a multiply node so I can use multiply and this roughness will work as a controller. So I'm going to connect it over here and in this will go to my roughness, right? So it will take some time. And as you can see, I'm having some sort of dirt over here. So let me check. Yes. And probably uh, you need to change the uh, this thing. If I'm going to do one, it will be pure rough. So I'm going to save it, minimize it. And you can see we are having lots of lots of lots of dirt. Right. So if you want to control that thing, probably I can use a uh, 0.2 or 0.3 something. So what will happen? We will have some amount of dirt, not that much. And as you can see, I'm having some amount of dirt. Isn't it great? If you want to make it a, a kind of frosted glass, so what you can do, okay, to make it frosted, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a node called spiral blur scene texture. And in spiral blur scene texture, I am going to probably I won't be needing scene color. I'm going to delete it and I'm going to connect this to B. And one more thing I need to do, I need to connect this scene color clamp to zero to opacity. So let me do that. Probably I need some space. So this is my opacity. Right. And to control that thing, I'll be needing one scalar parameter and I'm going to do this and probably I'll convert it to parameter and I'll name it a uh, uh, blur. Blur value might be. And let's connect it to distance. And this parameter will control my blurriness. So I'm going to save it one more time after saving it. If I'm going to minimize it, you can easily see nothing. There is no change over here. But to control that thing, probably I can add a blurriness of one just to show you. So what will happen? Everything will be blurred. Let's let's save it and let's minimize it. And you can see it's totally blurred. Can you see that? It's totally blurred. So if you want to control it, probably I can put it 0.3 or 0.2, not much or 0.2. And let's save it. And as you can see over here, I'm having my dirt, I'm having my reflections and whatnot. So by using this technique, you can create easily create frosted kind of glass and realistic glass. And I'll suggest you to uh, play with your values. And I'm sure this will help you to understand the process in a better way. And if you think that this video is helping you in any way, Please don't forget to like this video, share this video. And if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. With this said, this is VFX Vibe signing off. Have a good day.